Hey girlfriend, this is Jan James. Welcome to the Hope After Breast Cancer podcast, where women who have endured breast cancer learn to have fulfillment over frustration, clarity over confusion, and faith over fear. We tackle the issues that many of our sisters face after a breast cancer diagnosis, from brain fog to fear of recurrence, from menopause to sex after breast cancer. This is the place to learn how to have hope after breast cancer. So strap yourself in. Welcome to the Hope After Breast Cancer podcast. Hi, it's Jan James from Hope After Breast Cancer again, and I would love to introduce you to my girlfriend, Wendy Marner. How are you, Wendy? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, doing good. I'm so glad we could get together. So Wendy and I were on the phone uh, or on whatever, a messenger video or something the other day, and we were talking about a ton of different things, just having a little girlfriend gab. But uh, in addition to the other stuff we talked about, Wendy was talking to me about her success with acupuncture managing her hot flashes. So we're here to talk about that success story because I'm not sure all of our women understand that that could potentially be a way that they could be helped. So Wendy, how did you first even, well, let's see, what was your situation with hot flashes? That might be a better way to start. Well, I had finished chemo and Then I uh, had to have my tubes and ovaries out and went on a Remedex. So overnight I went into menopause, you know, no kind of gradual thing. Uh, So they hit me uh, and I, they weren't so overwhelming that I couldn't handle them. And I heard different stories about them. So I just kind of took it as it came and it, I seemed to be, you know, they were kind of easing off, but then I did get sick and they came back. And so at my next appointment with my oncologist, I said, you know, I was doing okay with these, but then I got sick and now they're like really powerful. And earlier on, she had mentioned that there are um, some products online that you can get that are, it's not like a prescription, but you can get things to help with them. And I said, I just, I'm not really wanting to throw another pill at something. Right. I mean, don't we, yeah, we have enough of that, don't we? Yeah. Right. So then she had, uh, she's a big proponent of, you know, taking uh, um, advantage of many of the different things out there and has had a number of clients that I've done acupuncture. I have never done acupuncture. So uh, I said, okay, I guess I'm open to it. And um, we, I talked with uh, someone in the survivorship program that we have, and she gave me a little more information and said that it's unfortunately not covered by insurance. Mm-hmm. And the doctor wants to have you booked at least three times and then kind of review how things are going with you. And uh, I don't know what prices are anywhere, but just to give you an idea of what I have here in Iowa, um, not being covered by insurance, the appointments are $125 each. So I knew going in that it was going to be 375. But it, for me in in my place right now that to try it was worth it not to say give me another pill if this works hey you know um we'll see how well it works and then what the maintenance might be how long I have to do this so that's kind of, that's how it started. How did you feel about being, having that recommended to you? Like, were you afraid of it? Were you curious about it? Like, what was your reaction to that recommendation? Well, we've had um, a very a prominent acupuncturist in our community for a number of years. So I've known of him 
and of the, the acupuncture. And it's never been something that I really wanted to explore before. I mean, different for different things in my life. Um, it's like, oh, go to the chiropractor or um, get a massage or, uh, you know, take some medicine. But acupuncture never really came into the picture. So I was very curious, but still a little hesitant. I get that. I get that. I think that um, we're all so accustomed to Western medicine. And uh, one of my girlfriends from Australia says uh, she lived here for five years and she's one of our experts, Karen Anderson. And she said, you know, you guys take so many pills. It's she said it's out of control and the amount of advertising on the TV about it and all that kind of thing. It's just that's Western medicine. So then when you think about Chinese medicine um, that has been working really, really well for that giant population for thousands of years, we just don't know what we don't know is my thinking, right? Exactly, exactly. Because the people that I've talked to about it, they're people who never would have considered it. But now that I've told them my experience, they're like, oh, so how can I do this? Right, right. And I think that you said something really important to Wendy, like depending on the size of your community, you may have, uh, this is the same with all medical providers. Um, if you're in a little tiny town, you may have to travel to see a qualified acupuncturist. We have um, Lisa Nicholson, who's a master acupuncturist on our contributing experts team, and she's in San Diego. Um, and so she's got all of the accreditation and all of the, you know, all the schooling and all that kind of thing, and so much experience under her belt. She's really a great resource for our women. But like, if you're in a little tiny town in wherever, Wyoming, and you don't, you know, you don't even have like a oncologist in town, then you're probably not going to find an acupuncturist. But the thing that I know too, is that a lot of times in major cities, um, cancer, cancer centers, I would say may have an acupuncturist or two on board. And so that's something to think about as well. And sometimes when that happens, they are covered by insurance. So just depends. Yeah, and my oncologist very much wants to get the doctor into our, it's called Hall Perrine Cancer Center, and that's kind of our one-stop shop. We get to see our surgeon and our oncologist, and if we have radiology, it's all done in one place. That's so nice, right? Good for you, yeah. So you're in Cedar Rapids, right, which is, or the Cedar yes. Rapids area, so that's pretty big, yeah, which is great. Well, so what was your experience, like, when you went in, like, because I, you know, I'd love to understand, I, I've actually talked to Lisa, our master acupuncturist, about it, and, like, what are the needles like, and how big are the needles, and, you know, we're, <laughs> we're always talking about, like, oh, what are the creepy things we don't know, but how was it for you? It was, it was wonderful and amazing and surprising. And this, I, I mean, Jan, your community is cancer women. These women have seen major needles. And we're talking about like super, 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 super fine. And so, they, they actually, like they would be like a piece of hair. They bend and they have a blunt end as opposed to a sharp end. That's the other thing that's interesting because Lisa's taught me that they go in between the cells as opposed to ripping the cells. Like when you have an injection, they, they want to rip into it so that the, the, the whatever's in the syringe goes through. But with acupuncture, they're trying to not damage any tissue. So those needles are actually blunt. And yeah, and so they are, I mean, I would describe them really very much like a hair because they bend, they, you know, they're not like a sewing needle that we would think of. Oh, heavens no. Right. No. Interesting. Yeah. So did you, did you even feel anything when you? That's you? the funny thing. You know, you expect if, if they're popping needles into you all over that you're, there were, yes, yeah, some that I felt, but it, I mean, it was just so so, 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 so minor. And there were so many I didn't even feel. So I'm laying on um, the bed thing. And so to, to kind of go backwards a little bit, um, the doctor's nurse took me in 
and gave me a gown, but I leave my underwear on and uh, and I'm also given um, a little blanket thing, a sheet. So when he comes in then, uh, he may, and it wasn't the first time, but later on he did pull the robe up a little bit and the sheet down so he could do some on my abdomen. Um, so you're you're covered. It's you know very discreet, uh, and I lay down, and he's asking me questions, and a lot of it is so. What brings you here? And you know, and I'm talking about hot flashes, and he's like, so how are they? When are they? The duration of them, you know, intensity and stuff. And so he's like starting at my right arm walks around my body, throws some in my feet, puts them in my left arm and my head. And like I said, a couple I felt, but most of them I didn't even feel. And so then, and there's, um, there's very soothing music playing in the room. And then he had one of those little ring for assist assistance bells. And he laid that at my side within reach of my hand and said, okay, um, now we're going to, you know, leave you be for a while, and I want you just to relax and let the needles work, and he shuts off the light, and he leaves, and it's, I didn't ask him how long, it's about 20 minutes that they just, they leave you there, and it's so relaxing, and time for a nap, right? <laughs> yes, yes, so then uh, after the time has passed, uh, his lovely little nurse, Remington, I love that. Um, she comes in and she's like, okay, I, I'm going to warn you right now. Don't open your eyes. I'm turning on the lights. And, you know, you can tell this really bright light goes on. So she's like, I'm just going to walk around and start taking the needles out. So I, I had kind of opened my eyes and I'm watching her. And I mean, they, they check extremely thoroughly to make sure that they have them all out. And, you know, then um, also they want you to try to plan for that day to be less strenuous and taxing on you as, as they call it, this is your day. So don't strain anything, try to, you know, be as low key as possible and also hydrate. That was a big thing. They give you a bottle of water when you leave. Hydration is huge. To get the toxicity out, I would guess, right? Yeah. Yes, you want to flush those yeah, out. They're opening up all of those channels. I mean, I know a little bit about it. I mean, it's, it's absolutely... I was going to say Greek to me, but it's Chinese to me. I have no idea about how that works, but Lisa's been teaching me a little bit along the way, but it's, it's fascinating stuff. Yeah. And so then, so that we'll say was my first appointment. And so when I went back for my second one, he asked, so have there been any changes? And I said, you know, not noticeably to me or noticeable but also to note that the effects are cumulative. After the first one, you're not necessarily going to notice anything, but it's after two or three or four mm -hmm. when you're gonna start to see these changes. And um, he asked me a, a question that I thought was Adi Sykes. So how are you know, um, your, uh, your bowels and everything working? And I'm like, they're working okay. So um, then he said, I'd like to uh, progress a little further. I'm going to use a few more needles and I'm going to um, use some stimulation on some of the needles. So that one, uh, he did put just a couple in my abdomen and then a couple that had gone into my head, they hooked to these um, little electrode machines and he said, okay, just, just tell me when you can feel it. If this is not a, I'm gonna electrocute you or give you a lobotomy. Um, it's just, and you'll feel this tiny little buzz. And I'm like, okay, I can feel it. He's like, okay, good. And then he's like, how about on this side? And I said, okay, I feel a tiny little buzz and we were good. 
So I had my time and uh, Remington came in and I said, Remington, you really know how to light up a room. So <laughs> I have fun with it. That's she laughed. Good. I laughed. It was good. Yeah, good. So then between two and three, I started noticing some issues with my bowels. So I started taking some stool softener. Mm. I mean, you okay, you're wondering, does this work or how do you know it's working? Whatever. I'm I'm a regular gal. Right, right. So when something like that changes, I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and my hot flashes aren't on the clock. Not all of them, but there's a couple. And Sunday morning, while my husband and I are watching church online, about 10 a.m., bam. And it it's regular Sunday morning, 10 a.m. And I'm sitting in a recliner and we have a ceiling fan here in the office. And my husband has learned. So while we're watching church, if at any point I start to throw off the blankets, he just reaches over, hits the fan, and we keep watching. <laughs> so it's like, oh, it's a okay. team sport, team sport, baby. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, oh, gosh. Um, but I did notice uh, them subsiding and not waking me up at night. Because if I wake up, it's like 2.30 a.m. and it may be 3.30 or 4.30 the last time I look at the clock. And I was sleeping through. So, so that was an improvement, but you're saying, but, but so this was between treatment two and three. Yes. And so you had still a, a boomer of one on Sunday morning, but mm -hmm. you were doing better at night. So there was, at least you could see some progress, right? Yes. Good. Yes. Good. So um, then between three, when I got to four, um, and the, the first couple are like, uh, the first three, one a week for three weeks, and then you go two weeks. My Sunday didn't show up. What? Yay! Awesome for you <laughs> and hubby. <laughs> so I said, Sunday was absent. We're happy about this. Wow. And um, another somewhat regular one was after I uh, get up in the morning and I'm showering, when I'm standing at my vanity getting ready, there'd usually be one that was, it was like five minutes long and manageable, but it was regular. Not anymore. Wow. Wow. What a blessing, huh? So, yes. that's a, you know, so I'm going to backtrack just a little bit. Number one, I think um, for all of us that have been through breast cancer treatment, I don't mean to be laughing, but I mean, we all know the drill, right? Um, I think sleeping through the night is a big, big, big win, big, huge, you know, because you're just so exhausted all the time. And so to me that I was like, that's good. Now I want to ask, so you started to get constipated after the second treatment. So you go back and see the acupuncturist for number three. So you obviously talk about poop then, I would guess. Yes. And yes. What was, and his, I, what was his thought on that? I told him I have been using a stool softener. He put um, another several. I don't know how many. I didn't, I couldn't feel them going in. So I don't know how many, but he put several in other places in my abdomen. No more stool softener. Wow. So no, and you know what? So, so many of our gals, definitely during treatment, I mean, we all have constipation issues, right? But I think even like my family has chronic constipation and, um, and I've had to, that's an interesting thing. I might need to go check this out because I just regularly take something, you know, just to kind of keep everything rolling along and everything. So it's not just, and that's not that's, good for you long-term. Really, yeah. Right. Right, exactly. So you have, uh, so how often have you been going now or did you, was it good after three or what's the reason? Um, I, I had three and then I had four. Um, and he said, so then we went another two weeks and uh, I had five 
last week and I'm, I'm feeling really good. So I have another one scheduled for two weeks and because he's talked about, you know, it, it, it's cumulative, but then we'll see what maintenance looks like. And with every person, it's going to be different. Um, he may push me and say, let's try three weeks or let's try a month. If you need to come back sooner, we'll get you in. I, I don't know. I'm just saying perhaps, but uh, so now I, I went two weeks and for one session, and now I'm in the wait week for my next one. I'll have one next week, but I'm feeling really good. That's so good. Are the hot flashes totally gone or just milder? Um, most of the daytime ones are gone. My Sunday one is gone. Wow. Uh, and, but the other ones, if I do have them, they're so much milder. I mean, it was like fire hot. Yeah. No, I didn't been there, done that girl. I know. And, and initially, I mean, even my ones between getting my tubes and ovaries out and so I'm having them until I got sick. None of them were that intense. So it was after I got sick that they got so intense. And yeah, now they're way smaller. And you know what? They're really, they can really, I think in the, I'm going to now here, here, watch me be punny. In the heat of it, in the middle of it, um, the dilemma is, is like, you know, if you have them during the daytime, they can be super embarrassing. Like if you're in a business meeting or something and all of a sudden like sweat is pouring off your body or, you know, I mean, it's just, and they can really be debilitating depending on what your, you know, what your day is like and everything. And nobody wants to go through that kind of stuff. And I just think I'm so grateful that you agree to do this discussion about it because I just don't think our women um, think about acupuncture, you know, they're looking about, I'm going to go buy some black cohosh off Amazon, or I'm going to, you know, they're, I mean, it's exactly what you're saying. It's one more pill or supplement and that kind of thing. And it's not to say that those things don't help. Um, but there are so what, one of the things that I am really learning along the way with our women is that we have for many years ignored natural type uh, medicine that could really help and is um, so much better for our bodies. And so, you know, again, you being able to say what your exact experience was that there, it's not a thing to be afraid of. Um, does it work for everybody? I don't know. I hear really good things from the women that have done it. You know, they really swear by it. So um, I don't know if all acupuncturists have a hundred percent uh, batting average, but it just is, you know, it's something to explore. It's very much like I find in our sex after breast cancer support group that um, I was so delighted a few weeks ago because I really was focused on finding some um, professionals that could talk to us about pelvic floor therapy, which is, I think, kind of a little known kind of therapy that can help with um, the muscles in the pelvic region, which would alleviate painful intercourse. And there was a thread, one of the girls said, who here has had success with um, pelvic floor therapy? And it was like, Brrr. there was a big list of girls going, it was the greatest. And so I'm expecting that we're going to start to see that now because of your experience that women are going to say the same thing about acupuncture, which is really awesome. And, so, and I hope so. And, you know, the my, like I said, my doctor is, um, she's into a, a lot of different things, but it's because there's, this may not work for a patient, but this may work because we're all different. Had she not suggested, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have gone to acupuncture. Right. It, it would never have come to my mind to think about it. Right. Well, and kudos to her for being open-minded about different, we would call those complementary modalities is what they call it in the medical field now, because um, they're not alternative. They are complementary to what's already happening with your 
different treatment, right? So it's something to come alongside what you've got to alleviate symptoms or, you know, provide some benefit to you. So kudos to her for, for even saying that. I think that's really awesome. So that's- And our, our survivorship program, I mean, talking with, um, shortly after my second treatment, our local um, cancer support group met. And the one woman was very into, okay, 125 for, you know, the first three, she's like, that's inhibiting to me. Mm -hmm. And Tracy said, um, you know, we're, we wish, and we're trying to get it covered by insurance, but they're looking for ways to get grants to help cover them for the cancer patients here. Wow. That's awesome. So that's really good. So that's something to look at too. And if you guys are at Cancer Treatment Centers of America or MD Anderson or, you know, one of the big systems, Mayo, um, I got to tell you, I know that they've all got acupuncturists on staff or multiple acupuncturists on staff. So, you know, just check into that. But again, it's for the smaller the women in smaller cities that are the issue. Okay, I'm gonna just, we're gonna divert right now. We're gonna have a little girlfriend gab, all right? Since you brought it up anyway. <laughs> okay, yes. So the reason, you and I first met during one of our workshops, which was uh, Reclaim Your Brain, right? Yes. And, and got to be girlfriends there, I don't know, a couple of years ago or whatever. And, um, and so then uh, maybe last week, you said in, I don't know, you just tagged me on something and I happened to catch it, which was great because I don't always, but um, you said, I got to talk to you. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, so we go into PM and then we decide to get on a video call. So we do that. And so it was, I mean, that is really the funniest story ever. I mean, <laughs> what's going on? So I know you're in Iowa. Like I know that you're in Iowa and I have had a crazy amount of contributing experts coming into our team at Hope After Breast Cancer. These are women that are in all kinds of different disciplines and uh, medical, mental, emotional, spiritual experts in lots of different things. And I had just interviewed maybe about two weeks before I was talking with Wendy, this gal that is at a, um, at a cancer treatment center in Iowa, and her name is Tracy Ridgway, and her um, oncologist, uh, who is her mentor, felt like there was really a need for a survivorship program at their center, and got the money and all that kind of stuff. So what happened with you, Wendy? How did you come at me with... <laughs> so um, I was at my last appointment with my oncologist, Dr. Stroh, and we're, um, you know, talking about things. And I'm at a point where technically it's time for me to go every six months instead of every three months. And, you know, we talked about some things that, well, how are you feeling about this? And I'm like, oh yeah, you know, it's okay. And I have my online cancer support groups, which I love. Nice. And she yeah. said, well, we have this survivorship program. And she said, you know, Tracy used to be my nurse. And I'm like, yeah, she's the one I ran to all the time when I first started with you. She's like, well, Tracy is the one who's in charge of this. And uh, I, I had mentioned to Dr. Stro the half lashes. And she said, so Tracy would be the one in this survivorship program to give you the referral for the acupuncture. And if you're have, you know, other issues, she'll talk to you about everything. So then she's like, do you want a referral for Tracy? And I'm like, yeah. And along with that was um, nutrition and stuff like that. Nice. So I'm talking to Tracy and Tracy says, we're going we're gonna to talk about everything. And what is said in this room stays in this room. Nobody knows. And you can't tell me anything that's going to surprise me. So uh, I want to talk to you about your sex life, how is that? I'm like, oh, kind of, kind of awful. She's like, so, you know, we go through yeah. the, I'm not going to cover that here online, but um, right, right, no, right. she's like, oh, so let me tell you, 
there's this gal who has this group on Facebook, sex after breast cancer, and she's got experts on there and there's products that you can get online at Amazon and talking about, and I'm like, is that Jan James? I know Jan James. Is that Jan? Oh my gosh. She's like, how do you know Jan? And I'm like, whoa. Oh my gosh. Because it was and it, there we it go. totally, I lost it. I was cracking up so hard because as you were telling your story and you said, Tracy, I went, no, this is not happening. <laughs> this is happening. <laughs> yes. So I got online with Jan and I'm like, Jan, they're I, recommending you in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I know. Well, we're worldwide now. Who knows who's next? I know. <laughs> no, but you, you know what? We, it's really fun. Tracy came, uh, found the Sex After Breast Cancer group. And then, you know, we have like a registration process where I always ask women for their diagnosis and their email. Their diagnosis is my only way to really, I want to make sure they're talking our language because, you know, whenever there's sex in the name of a group, all the creepers want to come in for real. I, I mean, pretty much every day I'm kicking men that are trying to get into the group out. And I'm pretty diligent about that. So um, she gave her email, but she wrote, I haven't had breast cancer, but I'm running this survivorship program. And I'd love to see what the women need. And I thought, well, how cool is that? So she said that in her registration. So I reached out to her by PM and just said, Tracy, we should talk. I mean, I want to know what you're doing over there. Because I have to tell you, after her explanation and then your follow up, what Dr. Stroh did to go get the money for that is really so forward thinking. I mean, it's really amazing in Little Cedar Rapids, Iowa, that they really are trying to provide a place for women to learn about all the things in the aftermath. You know, we I, all of the experts are with us because we all agree that there is like a Grand Canyon gap between the end of treatment and the rest of your life. There's just like, who do you go to? What are you supposed to, who are you supposed to talk to? And our regular treatment team, you know, our oncologists and all those people, they're, you know, I actually talked to my personal oncologist and said, you know, well, who do we go to? She said, Jan, it's all I can do to keep people alive and get the cancer out of them. I, it's like I don't have any more bandwidth. And listen, she wasn't being mean. She was just being real. She's got a big old caseload. And uh, we're in the Phoenix, Arizona, USA area. And so I got that. But we have to develop and help the industry understand that we need to develop something for after treatment is over. How do we help our women with these lingering issues? And so kudos for Hall Perrine, the center in Cedar Rapids that is really doing great work. And man, I really applaud them. But I, I felt, a little, I was a little puffed up about that, that uh, story. <laughs> admit it. I was like, that's crazy. It just, it cracked me up, you know, that it was just, I don't know, the stars align, God put that all together, whatever it was. So. <laughs> Well, I was all puffed up from the time Tracy said your name until I talked to you. It's like, I got to talk to Jan. <laughs> and when I told Greg, he was like, oh boy, here we go. You know, so. <laughs> so, no, it's, it was just so cute. So yeah, well, all right. Listen, sis, thanks for hanging out with me a little bit today and telling girls, I am super excited. I wanted this story to be at the end because they probably are not listening by now, which is fine. I wanted them to get the, the real guts of the thing and, and make sure that they know that acupuncture could really help them. And you were saying you're hoping to, to have acupuncture perhaps help you with some other things, learning what other things it can help with, right? Absolutely. Yeah. There, I mean, there. I have some other issues and, you know, sometimes you just, you put off dealing with them because you're not sure what the answer is going to be. But now that I know the power of acupuncture, right. yes, it's going to be added to my repertoire. Right. You know what? I just have recently done some new interviews with Lisa Nicholson and Folks, you can find those on the Hope After Breast Cancer website. If you go to the blog section and type in acupuncture, you can find those. Um, Lisa's been talking about, um, she said that she even had success with a woman that had really terrible wound issues. 
and that the healing was so complete that her other doctors were just going, what in the world happened there? Now, you know, so we can rack it up to acupuncture, or maybe there was a combination of things, but um, Lisa wrote a paper for one of their, their journals, one of their industry journals to say, wow, we really need to investigate this to see if it's really something that we can help with long term. So um, I think, yeah, there's wisdom in us looking at alternative and complementary modalities so that you know, it doesn't have to be all straight down the road. The other thing I meant to mention is that we all have different doctors and um, you are your own best advocate. And our doctors are human beings just like us. They put their pants on one leg at a time, just like us. And they know a lot of stuff, right? And I, am, I have huge respect for the amount of time and effort and money that went into their education. There are so many things happening in the world of medicine that one person can't know them all. And so many of our docs are great about being open-minded about complementary options. And then there are some that are just not. And so just be aware of that. I hope that you have someone that's open-minded. If you bring them the idea of acupuncture, that they would say, well, give it a whirl. You know, I mean, it's, it's every, as Wendy said so many times, you know, everybody is, everybody is different. And so we just don't know how individual modalities will work with you or not. So, um, but I think that I'm just grateful to, to every woman that comes with this, to us with the success story. We need to know about those things. So anyway, so thanks girlfriend for hanging out. Okay. Appreciate Absolutely. your time today. Thanks. It's always good to chat with you from Iceland. I always joke that Wendy's background looks like she's in Iceland. <laughs> So anyway, okay. Better than the normal one. Yeah, no, I know. I know. I just got my back wall. Same old thing. I know I should try some different stuff. Well, that's great. Okay. Thanks, Wen. Uh, yep. and, and folks, this is Jan James uh, signing off for Bre hope, hope After Breast Cancer, wherever I am today. Hope After Breast Cancer. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for being here. Girlfriend, thank you so much for listening to our podcast. I hope you found some nuggets to encourage you and give you hope. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. You never want to miss an episode. And we'd love to know how we're doing, so please be sure to leave us a review. Until next time, this is Jan James encouraging you to remember there is hope after breast cancer. See you next time.